And so we're going to talk about the future of bot development using pre-built components. And um, again, the, the topics and all the great stuff in this presentation is all because of Pooja, but you are listening to me, David Nugent, and we're both colleagues here at IBM. So let's get started and, and also feel free to ask any questions in the chat. Um, there is actually a, a lab component to this. Uh, there's a there's actually a couple labs. I'll show you the links at the end. So what I want to do is I want to do a quick um, sort of introduction to the the topics that Pooja was going to talk about, and then also uh, do a, a brief overview of each lab. I don't think we'll have time to actually get into the nitty gritty of the lab, but we can at least peruse some of the JSON that you'll be using to incorporate it into your um, into your chatbot instance. So uh, th there's obviously a ton of interest in chatbots. I, I just Puja pulled in four of or three of these data points. 78% uh, of customers will back out of a purchase due to a poor customer experience. 66% of consumers ended up end up using at least three different channels to reach customer service. And you know, you could think of that as a web page, you could think of that as a chatbot, you could think of that as a phone call, you could think of that as going in person to to yell at somebody. Um, and 70% of all contact center costs are related to personnel and staffing. So there's a real benefit to providing users with answers to their questions and intents and resolving their issues. If you're able to do that while keeping staffing costs at a minimum using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about briefly today. And inside IBM, we have a group of sort of developer facing products called Watson Assistant, um, which is this conversational AI platform that provides customers with super fast, straightforward answers to their questions, assuming that we as developers design it properly into our products. So if you think of companies that use chatbot applications, they're probably using a backend service like Watson Assistant under the hood. And that's because it's a single API and lets customers interact over lots of different kinds of media, right? And so this could be the types of media that we were talking about, three different channels, 66% of customers are using channels like mobile, SMS, web chat, uh, telephone, telegram, holograms, you know, you name it. Um, any of those platforms, you can actually interface through an API into Watson Assistant or the, the, the whole class of Watson Assistant type of, uh, of products. Um, and so creating Watson Assistants is done through a dialogue skill, which you can see in the center of the slide there. Um, that's where people or developers uh, can set up a customer's intent as well as the flow of the conversation. And you can combine that with a number of different services that we provide in our cloud catalog, one of which is Watson Discovery, um, to make sure that the chatbot is built in a really dynamic and customer friendly way. And then there's also out of the box connections to voice agents that can make the experience a lot more dynamic. So there are really a lot of different tools that you can use to craft a cohesive experience for their customer so that they can get detailed information about your product out of your knowledge base uh, and hopefully solve their problems with the bare minimum of wait time and expense to you. So, ah, yes, sweet, this is working. And do I have to click it? I think I have to click it. Oh, yes. So this is an example of a Watson Banking Assistant. It's a chatbot that lets customers interact with it. Uh, and you'll see that there are different options. You wanna find the minimum viable path to find out what the customer's issue is and then resolve it as quickly as possible. That's the, that's the goal. And to do that, we, we need to talk about intents. So let's see if I can do that. Yes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So intents are what the users ask is, right? It's the reason that they initiated a conversation with your company, the reason that they're coming to you for some kind of support or purchasing decision or whatever that is. Um, it requires understanding what the end user or customer is intending to ask, <clears throat> excuse me, hence the, hence the vernacular. Um, and that, that drives the conversation and drives the dynamic interaction that your application is gonna have with the users, that understanding of their intention. The intent uses state-of-the-art um, natural language understanding, and it tries to understand exactly what the customer wants based on different wording. So it can be trained over time as you develop more of an understanding of who your customers are, what they want, <clears throat> and sort of like what they've asked using the metrics on your dashboard based on past customer interactions. So it gets better and better the more customers interact with it and the more you train your model. Um, so here is an example 
of a password reset intent. So intents, um, in this case, there's a few examples for, for a single intent of what a user might say. So they might say, I forgot my password. How do I get my new password? They might say, oh, I can't log into your site, which is a clue that they're going to need to resolve some sort of issue with their login, potentially with a password. And so all of these can actually be directed to one specific intent which is a password reset. And when a customer says one of these things, it'll trigger that password reset intent, and that will guide the rest of your interaction to solve that particular problem for the customer. Um, so another example, this, uh, this particular statement can be trained as a password reset intent. I'm frustrated, I haven't been logged, I haven't been able to log into your online billing system. Um, and so that's, again, talking about what I can't log into. So you can see that we can identify that the intent is going to be mapped to a password reset. Makes sense. Um, you, you can also use Watson Assistant and the different Watson products to identify different entities that it, I, that, that it can uh, find inside of the user interaction. So in this case, it can actually identify online billing system as a noun. Uh, and then you can do stuff with that information. And you could also pass it through our Watson tone analyzer and get information like the emotional tone. So you might have your chatbot interact differently with the user based on whether they are angry versus whether they're happy. Maybe you'll uh, escalate one to a live person more quickly or, um, you know, th there's lots of different metrics that you can run based on what's most efficient for your particular customers and your, your particular use case. So slots, a uh, slot is a variable. I might have to click this one too. Oh, no, I don't have to click this one. Never mind. Uh, it's a variable that collects information from the user based on their action. And so you can actually get a lot of detailed information from the user and use that to guide the conversational aspects of your conversation going forward. Webhooks are really interesting because you can um, pull in the information about the user and use that to customize your answer. So not just the information that the user is telling you about them, but also the information that you already know about the user from other sources. And all that can happen in line with your dialogue. It doesn't have to look weird and disjointed the way a lot of API mashup applications can. So, um, and then I mentioned analytics, sort of like growing um, the information that you have about how in users interact with your system to improve the training of your machine learning models for customer interaction. So we have an analytics dashboard that lets you visualize trends in your user message data. So maybe you'll be able to focus more on a specific path uh, or a specific part of your model based on how users are interacting with it. Maybe they're choosing to use the chatbot or the voice interaction, uh, live voice interaction for some particular things and they're using the documentation for other parts um, to answer other questions. And so you can tailor your feedback uh, to that. And then of course, it's the cloud. You can deploy it anywhere. You can deploy it on-prem. You can deploy it uh, in a private data center. You can deploy it on any public cloud of your choosing. You can deploy it on you know, your own laptop if you wanted to, don't do that. So there's a couple of labs that Pooja has uh, put together that allow you to get your feet wet with um, Watson Assistant. It's all free. You don't actually need to pay for anything. So there's these two URLs. And actually, I should probably just paste these uh, in the chat. But uh, can I do that? I hope I, well, I already did. So this is the first one. Uh, and so this is uh, called B Travels. This is a chat. This is a way to create a chatbot using a pre-built chatbot component that Pooja's already created. And what you can do is you can create this component and export it as JSON, and then import it into your own um, Watson Assistant instance. So let me paste that here in the chat, and please tell me if this is uh, not the correct chat to to paste it in. Um, I put it in stage. I hope that's right. I hope, yeah. I hope everyone didn't get an email from me or something. Um, so this is a step-by-step -step instructions, and we we won't go through everything. But basically, what you'll be doing is you'll go to uh, create the service on IBM Cloud. When you create it, just uh, following my cursor here in the upper right, make sure that you create it under the light T 
tier. Light is IBM speak for it's free and it'll always be free and you don't have to put a credit card in. So as long as you're creating things on the light tier, you won't have to put in a credit card. You won't have to worry about being charged because you created a Watson assistant service a month ago and forgot to turn it off. Um, it is limited. You, you're limited to like 5,000 interactions a month or something like that. It's, it's detailed in the sign up page. Um, but then once you do that, if you click on service credentials, you'll actually be able to see your API key uh, and then also the URL. And so these are two pieces of information that you'll need later on in the lab. And so what you'll, what you'll do is you'll actually add a dialogue skill. And so as, as you uh, probably remember, skills are sort of like one of the core building blocks of, of our assistant structure. And you'll be able to actually import that skill from this travelbot.json file. So you'll be able to create and interact and modify it using the user interface, but this will help get you started. Um, and so you can see that we've got our intents structured in here. We've got some examples. I wouldn't recommend, recommend changing the JSON directly, but you'll be able to change it through the UI. Um, so for example, for car selection, where can I find a rental car? Where can I get a car? Um, and so all of this is provided to you to get to sort of like bootstrap up your assistant. And, and this is uh, this is just the first lab. I know I've got about five minutes left, so I'm gonna use the last five minutes on the second lab. Um, but as a part two for this lab, because it, you know it's cool if you create a travel bot that you can interact with and you know say, um, where are you traveling? I'm traveling to France. I wanna find a hotel. What's your check-in date? It's great to gather all that information from users. Um, but I think the coolest part about this is that there's actually a, sec, uh, a step two, which is a Slack integration. So if you click Slack in here, I'll just, I'll paste this link as well into the chat. Um, there's actually a um, walkthrough that allows you to create a, a Slack instance and then integrate it using your API key and URL that we just covered uh, through our Watson service page, you can actually integrate it with your Slack application. You can create a Slack bot that responds to user queries. So then you can see that you can use the same model that you're training. You could use that same JSON set of, um, of user queries and potential responses to respond whether the user is querying you, you know, over uh, Twilio SMS or uh, over a voice response system or over Slack or over a chatbot on your website, however that is, you can, um, so this is just one way of, of doing a, a slightly more complicated interaction. The second one, and I'll paste this link into the chat, this is the second lab that you can uh, dive into if you want to start coding uh, based on a chatbot is actually part of our call for code challenge. So IBM every year with our partners, including the United Nations and the uh, Clinton Global Initiative actually runs the uh, call for code, which takes the skills of coders all around the world and uses them to try to solve pressing issues that are affecting everybody. So um, our focus is on um, a number of different uh, solutions related to climate change. There's one related to um, COVID. And in this starter kit is specifically targeted at communications around COVID-19. Um, and so this architectural diagram shows you the website integration that this starter kit allows you to build. So basically the user um, visits a website, in this case, it's a Node.js website, and asks a question that gets passed along to Watson Assistant, which then triggers a uh, function as a service, sort of like an Amazon Lambda. We use an Apache project called OpenWhisk that can actually gather data through discovery from different news articles or through uh, your different APIs. I think in this case, we're looking at the COVID-19 API to get different statistics about current case rates and vaccination rates. Uh, and then also you can see that the, the Watson Assistant can be exposed also via Slack. So this Slack integration is obviously very uh, similar to the, the first lab that I showed you. This is a little more complicated. I think this uh, application is a little more complex because you actually do have a web server in the middle. But if you're looking for a challenge, I definitely recommend checking out this chatbot uh, lab. And then if you really you know, want to feel free to build a team or work on your own and submit 
um, to the call for code 2021 challenge, which I think the, the deadline is in July. Uh, but we have hundreds of thousands of people working on the call for code challenge right now. And so we'd love to have more participation. Um, and so, yeah, there's more information about call for code in the call for code GitHub repo. So I think at that at this point, I've sort of very briefly covered everything to a to a not to a shallow depth, I would say. Um, but I would be happy to take any questions or um, or uh, negative feedback or requests from my social security number. Um, I'm sorry, I, I didn't I didn't see the entire last session, so I don't know how how uh, heavily the audience will roast me at this point. Well, I think that for your social security now, we have to put it in the chat. <laughs> because. <ooh. laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. OK, so uh, what people are liking uh, the, the talk, David, um, let's let's take some questions from the audience. If you guys have any questions, um, and it usually takes them a minute uh, to get warmed up there. We're still digesting. Yeah, yeah. It. No hurry. I can also I can also dig into the UI. Um, yeah, do that. Application here. So, yeah. one of the you know once you create your um, your Watson Assistant service, there's tons of different services that you can create in you know the cloud. Um, on IBM Cloud, there's hundreds of different light instance services that you can create and that you can link up as a developer. But one of the cool parts, about Watson Assistant is that mm -hmm. you don't actually have to be a developer. And that's well, scary for me because I'm a developer and I want everything to be only developers. It's called job right. security, you know? Yes. But it turns out that you don't actually need to be a developer to create uh, an intelligent chatbot. Um, and so once you create your service, you can click Launch Watson Assistant. Mm -hmm. And then you actually get this fully fledged UI where you can create intents. You can train your model based on different user responses. Mm -hmm. Mike it says it's past midnight here and still awake. So good job. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I hope I, I, you, you must have drank even more soda than me. You know, you know, after this, we have a, a, another panel and then we do happy hour. So I hope he's awake and drinks a few beers with us. <laughs> but oh. then, yeah, I hope you do too. Uh, we're going to be doing the, the networking. Uh, we're going to be doing it in the. Uh, it's going to be in a session tab. So I do have a, a question for you, uh, David, and that is like, you mentioned you guys have slots and slot filling. Um, how well do you follow? Uh, how well does it handle context switching? And then going back to the original intent. So, for example, uh, let's say that, and I use a coffee shop as an example because we've we've all done this before. Like, imagine you're going to a, um, a coffee shop. The barista asks you, David, what would you like to drink? Uh, you say, you know, I'd like to have a latte with 2% uh, milk uh, and a croissant, right? And at this point, it got half of your order, but it also now it's triggering the he wants croissant order. Um, now, in real life, your barista would, 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 would then ask you follow-up questions. What size do you want? Right, she would finish your drink order um, because she knows that you know. Chances are that there's just one type of croissant, unless there's a chocolate croissant, right? So, so how does uh, IBM Watson handle that? How does it go from uh, finishing up the croissant order to going back to the to the coffee order, and then making sure that that's the entire order? No, this is this is really this is a really good point. Um, so for my and I'm actually going to answer your question at the same point that I answer Zara's question, which is okay. what do you say is a limitation of Watson Assistant, mm -hmm. um, and that is that there are there are so many different ways that you can create sort of complicated conversational uh, trees yes. uh, inside an assistant, and I know you know personally. We're, we're, right now we're looking at the UI that you can actually sort of create the skill, right? And yeah. at some point when you start to get to a really complicated set of solutions or issues or data, um, the UI can become a little bit less than ideal. Uh, and so I would say that that might be the point at which you would start to think about you know, is this the point where we get our development team and we actually start using the APIs directly as opposed to the UI? Because using the APIs directly, you can get a, a lot of 
sort of like fully featured interactions that might be more difficult if you try to shoehorn your entire you know very complicated enterprise application into into a, a ui like this um so i think that's it, it's a really good it's a really good question of you know mm -hmm. what tool are we going to use to build this out and at what point are we going to sacrifice sort of like the ease of use of the ui versus you know getting a lot more power out of the apis through um through like direct uh application access um and I, I i'm sorry if that if that seems a little bit strange as a developer i love using apis you know i love using third-party applications i think i think you should really use um each app each sort of application the way that you should use the best tool for the job so um if you're you know using lots of assistant and you're like you know i'm not really happy with the you know, live chat functionality, um, then sure, do an integration with some, you know, a plugin, a JavaScript plugin that's better for live chat on your site. If you're syndicating it through our IBM messaging broker and you're like, you know, I really would like a different messaging service, use PubNub, use uh, Vonage, use, use Twilio. I think you should really use the best tool for the job. Um, I think Watson Assistant itself, it's great for enterprise. It's great for interacting with different open source applications. It's great for security and compliance. Uh, and it's really good on the uh, building models and customer interactions. But when you're actually building the application that interacts with the customer, I think that's something that you'll, you'll probably end up doing on your own, or you'll probably end up sort of like using a, a third party tool for that. So Peter uh, asks, um, it's a can good you question, Peter. Oh yeah, you can see it. Uh, so I'll say it out loud for the uh, uh, for the audience as well. Can you mix and match so you line APIs, or do you have to decide beforehand? I found that if you tip your developer advocate well, you don't need to. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so you 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 don't need to decide ahead of time. Um, what I'd actually recommend that you do is go into your Watson assistant again, the light version, totally free. Don't need to put a credit card down. Mm -hmm. and try to build out a simple application for me that's mm -hmm. what helped me really understand you know entities options variables collecting information from users and then mm -hmm. also using webhooks to actually ping data and get data back um, you can create actually quite you know complex workflows using the the ui um, mm -hmm. At a certain point, it's possible that you might reach the limitations of the UI. And at that point, it's fairly trivial to just replace those with your own API integration. So that 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 would be that's just me personally. I like to use a tool until I outgrow it. Um, but of course, you're welcome to just start hitting the APIs. You know, hitting the APIs out of the box can be a little bit it's it's like drinking from the fire hose you know there's a lot of documentation about it so i feel like the ui is is a much gentler introduction to the different terminology and stuff like that mm -hmm. is there a specific uh, use case that you guys are just excellent at it uh, that does you need that watson does uniquely well yeah so i mean for and again i'm not in i'm not in marketing uh, much to the chagrin of everybody in marketing they're probably like we have a whole you know 10 page pdf that some consulting company wrote about this but i'll tell you from my perspective um it's it, it's enterprise so it works you know worldwide security and compliance so it's compliant with all sorts of different privacy regulations gdpr all that stuff that i also don't know very much about as a developer i'm the one who usually violates those those privacy um, issues before the cio slaps my wrist um and so i think I, I think we're really good at sort of appealing to those large enterprise companies that mm -hmm. want a sort of like holistic open source approach but at the mm -hmm. same time working as an individual or as a startup you can leverage those same tools that these enterprises are using to power their chatbots and you can use them yourself as long as you're comfortable with sort of you know either in this case using the light pricing tier or um or bumping up i think there's a there's one above light like a 30-day trial that's also free i see and um so i think we're down to we have a couple of questions from the meet and Quan. um would you summarize uh, the pre-built components um, and then also, what's the the deal with privacy and, and customer data? And how is that handled by Watson? I 
this is probably something where I will punt on the second question about privacy and customer data. And that's just because I am a developer and I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not totally up to speed with all the terminology about that. And I would hate to say something that is either wrong or gets me fired. So okay. I apologize for that. But if you, if you reach out to me afterwards, uh, okay. I will give you my Twitter here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And my DMs are open, so I can I can direct you to the appropriate person on that. And then, yeah. what was the what was the first question? Uh, the first question was, um, can you give a summary of the pre built components? Yes, the three so, or five more most popular ones. Um, oh, so it's a one minute timer. <laughs> absolutely. So the best thing to do is to check out the the lab, uh, and I will paste that component. Uh, or I'll paste that URL again. Um, okay. That actually has a link to the JSON that has the pre-built, oh. um, the pre-built uh, information about the assistant skill. Uh, and so uh, there are a lot of other uh, pre-built skills out there. Uh, and if you, again, if you want me to direct you to any of those, I don't have the links handy, but reach out to me, and either I or Pooja will get back to you with information. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, David. And um, thank you, and thank you everybody for all the questions. This has been really yeah. fun. I mean, there's a lot more questions. Like, if you can come in the chat and chat back and forth with Zara. Oh, I'm in the I'm in the wrong spot. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. It's all right. So go to the stage chat, and then there's a chat and there's a Q and A. But oh, you know, people are asking. Yeah, people are asking questions also in the event tab, but not as much anymore, which is good. We we'll, we we figured out one spot. David, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. I apologize if this was a bit rushed, but last minute substitution. Thank you all for being very polite. If you want to say anything bad, just say it on Twitter. That's what that's what it's there for. That's good enough.